Hey, what's up entrepreneurs? Today we're gonna be diving to what settings I use to live stream using Ecamm Live and my real camera like you're looking at right now. Let's get over into the tutorial. Hey, what's up entrepreneurs? It's Diana here with Unfair Woman TV. And on this channel, I help you simplify the video creation process. So whether that's walking you through some of the video marketing tips or some of the more technical sides, like we all need a little bit more help with these days in quarantine, both are here on the channel, but let's jump right into today's tutorial about Ecamm Live. So when you're first starting using Ecamm Live, it can seem a little overwhelming simply because there's a lot that you can do, but I really like to minimize things to what am I actually going to use it for and what am I actually going to do with it and then creating a system around that and then if I want to explore and do more with the software then I can add things on progressively so I'm just going to give you the baseline of what the actual preferences or system preferences are in Ecamm Live and then how I set up my screens and everything when I'm getting ready to live stream for video. Okay, so here we are over in Ecamm Live. When you first set it up, you'll notice a few different icons on the screen and everything like that. But before we get over to those details, I wanna go into system preferences. Now, when you go up here to Ecamm Live, you wanna go over to preferences. Now, if you haven't uh, checked for updates, it's always nice to go ahead real quick just to check for updates. There is one, so we're gonna go ahead and recently install it just to make sure if there were any bugs or any recent new changes or fixes, all of those things are resolved before we ever get started into actually setting it up. If you're newly installing it into your computer, you shouldn't have any problems. Okay, so now we have it set up here. We're gonna go back up to this menu setting and we wanna make sure that we go over to preferences. So inside preferences is where you are really able to adjust and decide what things should look like, what, where things should be, transitions, all of that. We're gonna go through each specific tab. I'll block any personal information uh, or what have you, and then you should see yours in the blank where you see it filled in. So the first tab is just gonna be the general tab. The play app sounds, I have that turned off. And if you're using like a shotgun microphone, like I did a video on different uh, microphone options that you could use, and if you don't have headphones in, for example, then you can hear that pop and it kind of gets annoying. So I have that turned off. Um, I do have to show the animated reaction. So when somebody gives me a thumbs up, you see one kind of shoot in the air, um, show controls while in other apps. So I can still, if I'm migrating over to Google Chrome or something like that, I can see those uh, and keep utility windows in front while live, which basically is to say, if I'm using any of the other windows that will bring up those stay on the screen in case I need to change those, which is super helpful because you don't wanna be in a place where you're live streaming, your microphone shifts when you switch scenes, which you'll get into, and then people are complaining now and the dis distractions have happened because they can't hear you. So another setting is uh, automatically hide the audio overlays uh, or comment overlays. I have that turned off because I wanna keep a comment on the screen for as long as I'm talking about it or that it's relevant to letting people know we've moved on to the next question. So I have that unchecked because I will actually physically remove that. It's a little X that'll be there so you can take it down. Um, show Skype's active speaker camera. Uh, this is more something like if you have multiple guests, then it can kind of switch back and forth, but I like to do things manually. I have that unchecked. So use discrete graphics card for the main screen. If I have this checked, then it'll quit it Ecamm Live so that it can restart it again, uh, but I can quit later. But this is just to say, go ahead and increase the performance since I have a new Mac that I'm using that have, has a dedicated graphics card so that some of the heavy lifting is going over to that dedicated card for that kind of stuff versus not. Now, if you don't have this, then you know there may not be anything, but it'll let you know right here where things are and if that's something that's for you. When you go over to the stream, these are details I find pretty important. So the stream size is going to dictate, are you gonna be in 1080p? Do you wanna be in 720p? Even potentially a lower resolution of 540p. And I like to stick with the standard of 1080p. I use a wide 16 by nine. If you're ever doing anything else, it's really nice to be able to see. Uh, for example, we can move this uh, out the way here and you can go to uh, a classic four by three tall, something like for an Instagram TV type thing. And this just lets you increase your creative abilities when you're recording inside of Ecamm Live. So I like to use those uh, depending on what it is, but for regular live streaming, we're gonna do 16 by nine, which is that 1920 by 1080p, which is basically to say the YouTube style. 
So the frame rate is important because on my camera, I will actually use 30 frames per second for live streaming. What you're looking at right now is 30 frames per second in the video. I want all of those things to match because if I switch it to 24 or 25, which is dependent on your camera, even web cameras typically are at 30 frames per second. I just don't want there to be any funny stuff between it missing or dropping frames. So I have that turned to 30. And if I ever decide to do like 24 frames per second for any reason, just stylistic choices, um, then you can change that or 60 frames per second, potentially if you're into gaming or if you just prefer that kind of uh, sports, um, you know, high definition news look, then you can do that. 30 is the standard though. Um, and then I have checked for high quality video mode and high quality audio mode because I always wanna be giving the best sound and look possible. But again, you can uncheck those um, if you wanna reduce the bit rate and how much data is going through your ethernet because you should never live stream via Wi-Fi. It should always be ethernet. So if you need to if you have a, a computer that's not as strong or doesn't have as many graphic points and all of that stuff, you can kind of uncheck the one for maybe the uh, video quality because at least you want the audio quality to be great. It just depends on your setup. The other thing is on the video tab. Uh, I have the default, it just has it set to the source mode of camera. So fade when finished, that means at the end of my live stream, I'll usually have my same ending thing and I'll have it, you know, as with that guy's little passion and I'll see you on the next video. And then I click in the, str the stream so that it's just not an abrupt stop. It just kind of fades off. And I think that still gives an editing kind of a look versus it just kind of being abrupt like we always see. Um, autoplay video files, I like to have this because I have a pre-roll screen that is a video with a timer uh, added to it. I have this set up as a dedicated video so that the music plays on a loop and it transitions like I want, just to kind of give it, give it a certain kind of vibe. And then I add on a specific uh, time code so that you can see the countdown of when we'll actually start. And that's really helpful if you ever have any problems with technical issues like I did the last stream. You can add a little bit of a buffer to say, yeah, the stream has started, but I need a few more uh, seconds, just maybe one or two more minutes. So it's helpful to have that um, so that you don't have to bring it on and hit play. It just removes a step. The next thing is show picture in picture above the overlays. I'll get into this a little bit later, but that's check. Show NDI and siphon titles full screen. This is, I don't want to get too, <laughs> too technical here but I have that checked, so it's helpful just to have that there. Now on the audio tab, um, I have the option here for when it says broadcast system audio. Again, I don't wanna to get too technical, but I prefer to have this just at default screen sharing mode, and then automatically mute the microphone and Skype audio during the video playback. Um, and again, it says here, as it exactly is what it is, the microphone and Skype audio will be muted when video playback mode uh, with no picture in picture. And I just prefer to have that there. Now, microphone delays, this can be something if your microphone introduces a delay or if you're experiencing one from the camera that you're using, if you're using a real camera. Sometimes just depending on the systems, the setups and all the softwares and things that you're running, you can have a microphone delay issue. So your voice is a few seconds, like your mouth will move, kind of like a bad movie, <laughs> your mouth will move and then you'll hear the actual audio for that movement a few seconds later. Now this has been increased quite a bit. So you can go, again, we're doing 30 frames per second, 30 individual pictures per second. Now you won't know the specifics of how many frames it's actually missing by, but you can just do a test recording where you increase it slightly. Do it, I would usually just do one at a time and watch it and say, now I'm increasing it, you know, to five frames. Now I've increased it to six. Now I've increased it to seven. Now I've like, and just keep going to see what kind of a delay is happening in your audio. And then if you look, once I actually turn on a delay, you'll see here over in the top left of the screen that it's, it's letting me know, Hey, you have mic delay on for the microphone you're using or what have you. With screen sharing, it's very simple. Uh, these are all the things that I have checked. Add margin when zooming to an app or a window. Uh, and all of these things have descriptions underneath there. Um, I have mine set to optimize for better quality on this one. Um, include the mouse cursor so that when I'm moving or I'm clicking on things in a tutorial or a live stream, something like that, you can see uh, that actual mouse move around versus it being a ghost. And then the other one is show everything when sharing the entire screen. 
Now, this is if you want to share Ecamm Live's window or if you don't, um, because depending on how you do tutorials, what you want to train on or what have you, you can get that infinite loop and it looks a little crazy. Um, but depending on, again, I use two screens to live stream, it could be a little bit easier that way. Um, I just have where I'll show everything. And if I ever want to change that, I can just come into screen sharing and uncheck that. So once you get over to the Facebook, the Periscope and the YouTube screens, this is going to let you distribute or send your stream out to Facebook, YouTube, or even schedule live streams. Now I prefer honestly to just schedule my live streams uh, in Ecamm Live. It just makes it so much easier. I can add my thumbnail, add my descriptions and all those different things. And then if I need to, I can hop over to actual YouTube in the YouTube studio and adjust things. Now, once you actually sign in with your username, your password, all that good stuff is secure or what have you, you want to pick, for example, YouTube being the use case here, um, YouTube category. Is it something that is going to be educational? Where should it fit at when you're live stream? This is stuff you usually would see in the YouTube studio uh, if you're setting up a live stream there. And you can select those options, but you can also select some of these here in Ecamm Live. And if there's anything that you need to change, add in tags uh, or anything like that, make any kind of changes to your description, uh, it'll actually give you a view post area that you can go over to YouTube and make changes. So those are the specific system preferences just to make sure overall across the board, all the settings that you have or would need on your actual uh, Ecamm Live setup is set up the way that it's supposed to be. The other thing that I like to go ahead and do is set up my scenes, set up my overlays, set up my audio and microphone uh, settings for specific scenes and all of that so that when I'm getting ready to live stream or I'm doing a recording or a tutorial or video or something like that, usually if you see me at my desk, it's being recorded in Ecamm Live. All that stuff is set up to kind of defaults that I'm going to use. That way I don't have to worry about changing it. So I want to go and walk you through some of that. So if you look around the screen on Ecamm Live, the first thing I always, always, always want to set up is for my microphone. This microphone with the levels symbol, it'll bring this up. I am always, always, always using and leaving the Samson Q2U microphone that I've been using for the last couple of years connected. And I always have my audio levels set. Um, used to be set at 67% or so, and I think I dropped it to like 59 or 58 or something like that. But that way I always know the number that is perfect for my voice, no matter how loud or soft that I get for the proper mic placement for my audio. And then for movie, if I'm playing a videos or something like that, I usually have this set to a little bit under half, so about 47%. The other thing is sound effects. Uh, one of the cool things with Ecamm Live is that you can bring in music in your live streams. And so if I'm creating a playlist or something to play in the background, then that would be in that sound effects section. For the main parts though, I wanna make sure that this is off. If you want to play music, what you would do is click on that music symbol. It'll pull up the sound effects uh, area. And then like you can see, I have some different music that's lined up in here. If I wanted to do uh, music with my stream or not, you can put it in certain folders so that if you're doing a gaming show one day, there's certain music that goes for that. Or if you're doing something more specific to training, you just kind of want some ambient, nice background music, you can drag and drop in audio for that. The other thing that I love to have up when I'm doing a live stream is this comments and reactions. Now, when I have a comment come in, even though I turn that pop off because now I'm getting uh, pretty regular comments, you guys are having conversations in the chat and I love that. Uh, but I also don't want to get distracted from maybe something I'm saying or somebody's question that I'm currently answering and I don't want you guys to hear it. You hear that, it's just, it's just kind of weird. So what I do is leave this box up here and as comments and questions come up, even super chats and for those of you that have given, thank you. You can have that here and you'll be able to see and pull those up. The other thing that I wanna pull up here is now my scenes. And the scenes is gonna be up here to where you see it, the just me. Um, I have that specifically titled so I know if I'm doing a live stream, if it's going back and forth between just me or me and a guest, you know, and me in a PowerPoint presentation or what have you. So if you click on that, whatever it says for you uh, is show the scenes window. And now these scenes, you'll see a lot of stuff here uh, and try not to get too distracted with all of these things. But basically I like to create systems for my live stream. I always want to create a simple uh, setup. The scene is what's going to control the show for me. And so you have scenes, which is like where everything is going to go. 
but then the overlays is going to be if I want to bring up a picture or do I want to add something like a, a scroll ticker to say, hey, we've now transitioned from the news portion of our show to the Q&A and I can set up where I have a predefined and preset up, you know, ticker that kind of scrolls across the bottom of the screen and say we're now entering the Q&A and ask your questions in the comment and so forth and so on. And then the eyeball just lets me know, is it visible or is it not visible? And so when I'm ready to turn that off, I just hit, click the eyeball for that icon that highlights and then, you know, goes a little bit more grayed out. And that's how that works. And so you can use this for a lot of things. Um, again, I have to do a dedicated video on that. But this is kind of how I have my, well, it was not kind of, this is exactly how I have my live stream set up when I'm getting ready to do a show. So if I want to transition from me being on the screen, if I want to do some kind of pre-show or PDF uh, presentation or something like that, everything is specifically set up and already pre-lined up. So if I ever want to do a new presentation, all I'm doing is replacing the PDF with the old one and I'm, all my other systems that I have set up for live streaming is pretty much set up. So that's everything of how I set up Ecamm Live, my preferences, my system overlays and everything like that. So that when I'm getting ready to do a live stream, I have a very specific system of how I'm going through where everything is. And it's evenly laid out on the screen so I can see, make changes as I need to. Now, if you are having issues with your live stream and you're experiencing some kind of lag, I'm including another video where I'm going to walk you through some of the things to make sure that you don't experience lag or if you are, how to identify where that's coming from, what's, why is this a, a problem that's showing up now, especially if you're using a, a real camera for your live stream. So check out that video on the screen and I'll see you in the next video.